the affairs. At this stage, I'll invite Honorable Rafael Nakachinda to speak to the matter of Honorable JJ Banda. Honorable Nakachinda, JJ Banda was taken to hospital yesterday. He underwent a medical procedure. There are reports that his uh, leg has been amputated. I want to put it very categorical. I've just spoken to authorities at um, Chipata General Hospital. There is no amputation. He was going through a medical procedure. It was okay and he's beginning to recover. But there's no amputation of uh, his legs that have occurred. But our concerns remain the same on JJ Banda. Honorable Rafael Nakachinda. Uh, Chairman Information, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I want to say good uh, afternoon or good evening to our viewers and listeners. Um, uh, Ambassador Mwamba is a diplomat uh, trained to uh, trained to uh, quote or use a language that sounds palatable uh, to those who are hearing, including those who are af affected and those who are perpetrators. Uh, I'm yet to undergo that training. <laughs> But uh, I think um, from my training, yeah. uh, we are trained to present uh, truths as they are. Uh, to even suggest that Mr. Akainde Ichirema should undertake constitutional reforms that are not malicious uh, is to give him a benefit of doubt. Three years is too much a time for us to continue being shortchanged. You give a, him a benefit of doubt in the morning, he comes and does something else in the afternoon. His uh, continued you know, uh, lies, deceit, uh, changing goalposts and hypocrisy, I think as we march towards the deadline of three years, of them being in office, the benefit of a, you know, of him being given a benefit of doubt, he no longer exists. Mm. Misaka in the had a caucus. His agenda is very clear. We need. He wants to amend the constitution to advance personal interests, political interests. One, to stay in office against the will of the people of Zambia. If he can succeed to have a provisional constitution that gives him seven years in office, he would do it. And that's what he wants to do. If it was to remove a term limit so that he can be in office as many times as he wants, he would do it. His greatest threat against staying in office clearly is Edgar Chagalongo. If he had a way in which he can kill him without being discovered, he would do it. For now, he's attempting by way of using either lawfare or indeed any other means by way of, for example, now he has hatched a route that he wants to remove his immunity and possibly push an agenda that he be persecuted within five months and have him convicted on trumped up charges. That is what he has schemed to do. Yeah. The caucus with members of parliament was centered around those issues. Not only the caucus with members of parliament, we are aware of also a caucus of some senior cabinet officers or ministers to which were given specific marching orders to say they should begin to engage members of parliament from the opposition, particularly patriotic front, so that they can be able to trade, particularly those who have been, um, who have been taken to court, having discovered that most of the cases they were alleging against these senior members of Patriotic Front are basically 
have no legs to succeed in the courts. They are saying, can you move in quickly and trade with them? Let them vote with us, we'll let them off the hook. If this is a man who was advancing the rule of law and seeking for justice on behalf of the Zambian people, he would not be scheming in the manner that he is scheming. So the issue of the amendment of the constitution is important that the Zambian people see it for what it is. There is what he himself said, Imingarato, meaning deceive the masses while you are doing something else. And if we try to be diplomatic about this issue, because these people are heartless, the Zambian people continuously be skating around thinking that maybe at some point you realize they need to do the right thing. It is a scheme to advance evil. Just the same way they're advancing the scheme of introducing you know, LGBT and all these you know, values. In one vein, he goes to, court, to, to church and says, I'm an elder, I don't believe in these things. But they have sponsored a group of people to go to the Concord to try and find that as a window in which they can introduce these very abominable practices in this republic. So let's not take these people for what they say, because whatever they say actually is calculated towards deceit. It's not calculated towards advancing what is actually on the table. Coming to JJ, first and foremost, Zambians must find the sentiments of Hamasaka, both in his private, on his private Facebook as well as the communication he channeled out on behalf of the president to be out of order. He himself is conflicted to comment on JJ. He did say, no, the former president should not have said what he said. It's not up to him. He is alleged, mentioned, and there are even documents in court that is among those that abducted JJ. What he's do, still doing in state house, we still can't understand. But we know that in the, you know, in the, in the, in the whole scheme, the agenda was to abduct JJ and eliminate him. It didn't work because of the outcry of the German people. And the heroes here are those who were brave enough, like Munia Zulu, Mawonga, Edith Nawakwi, and others who spoke strongly on behalf of the Zambia, of Zambians against that barbaric act. JJ was found alive. But immediately it moved from these individuals that were mentioned to the state being the ones that have abducted him with a clear agenda to have this person killed. What is happening to JJ is an expose of the fact that the life of JJ is under threat. They want this person, if it was possible, for him to basically never exist. Because his existence threatens the exposure of what, it, what really transpired at the time that he was abducted. JJ would not be the one that should have been in jail. JJ should have been outside. And those that were mentioned in the abduction should have been the ones in Chipata, in prison, and not JJ. And we call upon the Zambian people, watch these criminal activities that are all centered around UPND top officials. The only unfortunate thing is that most of them are found around the circle of the president. The deputy IG, Miambango, is reported to have gone to Copper Belt, identified a Zambian businessman who has a contract with foreigners and a dealership as a consultant to be able to supply agricultural equipment, including tractors. He went and negotiated against the policy of the company, according to the reports, against the policies of the company to get a tractor on higher purchase. After I got a tractor on higher purchase, the reports show that he decided he will not pay. And in having the 
gentleman by the name of Floyd Manembeka, who's the consultant, demanding for payment because he was at the center of negotiations, he chose to abuse his office. That Floyd Manembeka was arrested because he went to complain to higher authorities. He wrote a letter to the president. He wrote a letter to the IG. He reported to other wings of government law enforcement agencies over the criminal conduct of the deputy IG by the name of Miambango. What has Miambango done? For the past four months, this gentleman has suffered abuse and brutality and detention without any ground whatsoever, whether it's a warrant of detention or any such law that would get somebody be in detention. He, Miambango went and tried to connive with the suppliers of tractors to this gentleman's account, you know, a company, alleging that this person is involved in criminal activities and you never pay. They came in Zambia and discovered such things actually don't exist. But by that time, Floyd had already been arrested, not because somebody complained, but arrested because police officers were being directed by the deputy IG to pick the gentleman. Copper Belt, we are aware that Copper Belt Command, when they investigated, they said there's nothing wrong that Floyd Manenbeck has done. We are also aware that one of the conflicts that arose between the then director of criminal investigation, Mr. Yui and Mr. Miambago, was on the basis that Mr. Yui did not agree with Mr. Miambago abusing his authority in victimizing an individual who was an, a victim to his failure and refusal to pay for the goods that he got. Even the you know, uh, transfers that were influenced within the police service, some of them are victims of this abuse of, of office. As Patriotic Front were saying, these criminal activities undertaken by high-ranking police officers should not be tolerated. As we speak now, Floyd Manembeka is unwell and his life is under threat at Lusaka Central Police. Because when he was granted bail here in Lusaka, Mr. Miyambaga decided to instruct junior officers who na whose names are known to pick him and take him and detain him in Karomo for three weeks without him being presented to court. When he was presented to court, he applied for bail. And when he was granted bail, just at the point of him fulfilling, him fulfilling you know, uh, girl, bail conditions, police officers went and presented false information to the court in Kalomo that Freud has a bench warrant in Indola. And they picked him, took him to Indola. The question we are asking, why didn't the court in Kalomo demand that the officers who were to execute that warrant, why were they not in court to present evidence of the fact that there is a bench warrant? But the police picked a person who was under the jurisdiction of the court to go to Ndola. And when he went to Ndola, the court in Ndola, before Majority Makalicha, did pronounce that there was no such a thing as a bench warrant. Instead of the gentleman being released, he was kept in Ndola, in a prison for another three weeks and only picked it during the night to bring him the day before yesterday in Lusaka to be presented before uh, the major city court here Chiwiri. A total abuse of office. And we are also aware of the fact that uh, personally, I had a personal experience of confidence of Umiambango some of them who are off serving in his office as his assistants and, you know, some of his confidants, coming to prison to offer Freud that if you want your problems to end, just write a formal apology to me and clear my name, then I'll drop off these charges. Miss Aka in the H&M. How can you be harboring these criminals in the name of high-ranking officers, either in the police or otherwise, 
And you keep on tolerating this. We have Masebo conducted, you know, found implicated in such huge scandals that have led to the death of thousands of people because of lack of medicine in hospital. All you can do is to transfer them. A citizen is being abused by your deputy IG, and what you can do is to keep them and watch. And it's not that you are not aware. You were briefed. Home Affairs Minister is aware. This government, the appetite to tolerate criminality only speaks to the fact that it is a government that is rotten from top to bottom. People's lives are at, under a threat. The same way they have threatened the masses of this country by subjecting them to abject poverty, by having sold all the maize that were in the reserves, our staple food that were in the reserve, so that people can be desperate hoping that through this hang, you know, anger, hunger and poverty, they can then manipulate the citizens to advance their agenda. But Zambians, let's wake up. It's better to, to have fun and sana, but we are right. It's better we go hungry and not allow these people to blackmail us through the hunger they have imposed on us, and we need to get rid of them. Vanena Tubuke, let's wake up. Let's arise and be able to get this criminal government out of office in 2026 and be able to save ourselves of this anguish and bring back a government that will adhere to the rule of law and you know, you know, root out every form of you know, corruption and criminality and, and get ourselves moving on the right path. Thank you very much, Chairman Information. Thank you, SG. I might call you back a bit. Uh, you've heard um, the SG make very clear demands on the issue of JJ Banda. He must be released. And the named abductors must be arrested. It shouldn't be the other way. And then there is a sad case of Floyd Malembeka, a mere businessman who supplied a tractor worth 220,000 kwacha to the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Mr. Muna Miambango, then who has proceeded to abuse his office to keep this young man. He paid 220. Yeah. Mm. The documents are there to the extent that Mr. Miuna Miambango hired uh, a law firm run by the Minister of Home Affairs uh, and uh, the JCC member, uh, Mr. Chad Mleza, mm. is called um, Mleza Mwimba uh, 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 Associates or Advocates. Uh, we have seen the communications and the complaint by the businessman, a letter to the president, a letter to the SEC, and a letter to the um, Police and Public's Complaints Commission that the police officer, in this case, the Deputy Inspector General of Police, is abusing his office and he has kept this young man in detention, this uh, businessman. The reason the SG is speaking to this matter is that Floyd has been refused access to medical treatment. When he appeared in court the other day, Honorable Davis Chiwili, the, the Chief Resident Magistrate, refused to sign a warrant. He said this gentleman is on, is on bail. Why should he go to prison? So they've kept him at Lusaka Central Police Station, where he has fallen very ill. And hence, I think other than that, uh, these people in our authorities are abusing their power. It's imperative that uh, Floyd is allowed to seek medical treatment and the abuse by the Deputy Inspector General of Police must come to, uh, to an end. We, we, we've seen all the correspondent, including his legal suit of defamation, where he's alleging that uh, uh, Floyd is, uh, uh, is, is defaming him. Uh, and you've seen it appears to be a pattern. Mm. Dr. Kaba spoke, someone sued him that he was defaming him. We JJ spoke, we saw someone sue JJ for mm. telling the truth. It appears it's an established pattern. When you bring credible allegations against these office holders, they rush to court that you are defaming them. The matter that SG, uh, I think, may also need to speak to, you are aware of our members of parliament, Kawambwa MP, who's our Deputy Secretary General, Honorable Nixon Chilangwa Pambashe MP, Honorable Ronald Kaumachitotela, Kawambwa Council Chairperson, Mr. Kalumba Chifumba, remain in jail. Uh, they were you know, jailed over a matter that arose in 2021 that they maliciously damaged 
a UPND vehicle. And SG, this brings me to a matter. Uh, our MP, Lucas Simumba from Nakonde, his lodge, which was a campaign center, was burnt to ashes in August 2021. His vehicle, the campaign vehicle, the 4x4 Land Cruiser, was burnt, and the culprits are known and identified. They were reported to the police. The police have never done any, any, any of uh, either prosecuting or arresting these perpetrators who bent down a lodge and who bent down Lucas Simumba's uh, vehicle in Nakonde. Um, another matter, SG, is you must have seen a flyer and a comment by President Akainde Ichilema that my wife and I who donate to the people of Zambia the five million meant to the president's retirement house. This is uh, literally mischief. Number one, the president is not former president. The benefits are to the former president. He's not former president. Number two, the former, the former president's benefit, benefits act of 1993 does spell out the benefits that are that the former president is entitled to, if you were to become former president. There's no cash involved in, there's no five million, I don't know how they came up to this five million. They could be referring to a matter of President Rupia Banda where he proceeded to build his house and demanded a refund. What must be made very clear is that there is no cash available. The law says they'll build the former president a house so they have to identify the land and build him. You can't convert that into cash. Then thirdly, there's a queue. You still haven't built the house for former President Frederick Chiluwa. You still haven't built a house for Levi Patrick Mwanawasa. You still haven't built a house for Michael Sata. You still haven't built a house for Edgar Lungu. Now you are talking about you accessing this money and paying it out. How oh, one you can't jump the queue. Fulfill the obligations as provided for in the uh, former President's Benefits Act of 1993 and fulfill these conditions to the former presidents, whether they are alive or dead, before you can jump and begin to, to celebrate on this matter. On the matter of Honorable Nixon Chilango and Honorable Kaumach Totela and the Council Chairperson, Mr. Karumba Chifumbe, do we have an update? I think there's been anxiety by our people. Maybe before we talk about the update, uh, uh, of course we're pursuing all applications. We know the schemes around trying to delay these processes so that they can declare the seats. I mean, declare that they can they, go for elections. Uh, they could be by-elections. But I think the pattern is what the Zambian people must continue to be reminded and follow. Yeah. We had our provincial chairman, Kungo killed. Those who committed that heinous and uh, capital offense have gone unpunished because of UPND. There were people that were killed in Western province. People who committed those offenses because of UPND were never brought to book. The same thing that is happening to those who are mentioned in the abduction of JJ. There were people that were killed, PF members were killed in Kanyama here. Mm. Up to today, perpetrators were never brought to book. Mm. Those who committed directly arsony against the properties by burning the properties of the you know, member of parliament for Nakonde, mm. his lodge, his vehicles, and mm. so on, who are known up to today, they are walking the streets free. So as far as the UPND are concerned, the law must apply against their political opponent. Yeah. Actually, even in applying the law, mostly it is to do with implicating opponents of having committed the crimes, and then they, they use them as a way of laundering themselves. So Nixon Chilangwa, she told her, based on the evidence adduced in court, clearly you can see that this was perpetuated by UPND, but they conveniently got these MPs, indicted them, and look at how we have described how this 
all thing has gone. Mm -hmm. How the magistrate was found in compromising arrangement, including records that audios, uh, audios that mm -hmm. came out. And what came out of those audios, the promised promotion, has since been executed. His influence based on what was pre, you know, determined. What was in the, available in the recording? In the recording. Mm. So, um, but it is all meant to cover up incidents like the one in Akonde and try and continue fueling this narrative that a criminal organiza political organization in this country is PF, when in fact not. The criminal organization we have is the UPND. And their criminality in opposition, now they have amplified it, they are executing it in government. And that's why we are warning the Zambian people, examining, uh, examining political parties and politicians when they are in opposition. What they do in opposition will just get amplified when they are in government. The criminality of the UPND in opposition is now you know, upped, amplified, in government, and that's what we're faced with. The only cure is not to explain and try to convince each other. The cure to get rid of this criminality is to arm ourselves with the vote. Let the Zambian people, regardless of the Mingaratovu, having people being registered secretly in Western province, Northwestern province, and Southern province, and getting people to spend days in the bush registering both young and old, so that they can up the numbers in those areas for purposes of wanting to rig elections. Now they are crying out that they have not even been paid the allowances. All that Mingarato can only be subdued in, they are sleeping and, in classrooms. and sleeping in classrooms can only be subdued by all of us arising with disdain against criminality and get rid of those who are perpetuating criminality, which is the UPND in government. Yeah.